Hi, this is Mike Hendrickson from O'Reilly. I'm here at Velocity New York with Alexi Lacroix. Alexi, how you doing? Good, great. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Sure. So you're with Datadog. Yes. And Datadog does what? Datadog is a uh, monitoring service that we offer to our customers. So our customers are typically developers, uh, operations teams that want to keep an eye on their full stack, on their machines, on their applications, and do that in real time. So when you say they're full stack, yeah. full stack of apps, or from all the way down to the OS, all the way up? Exactly, so all the way down from the OS through the, their databases, their web servers, their caches, their application servers, um, all the way to the, basically to the front end. Where we stop is we don't run anything in the browser, but you know, anything else is, is game for us. Okay, so um, before we go too much further, I just got to ask, where did the word Datadog come from? That's a great question. So um, in a previous life, uh, we would name machines. So you know, there's always this problem, how do I name machines? Back when, back before AWS, where machines were just, you know, just a commodity, then you had individual machines, so you'd take some time and name them. Um, and you always had to find a scheme to remember, right? A pet or whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So in our case, we had um, cats were for test environments and birds for staging and dogs were for production. And then we had web dogs for, uh, for web servers and application servers. Front. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And data dogs, there were a number of them, uh, for databases. And so that's, we found the name actually to be easy to remember. So when it was time to start Datadog, it was like, well, it looks like we have a name. And I think you know, we have a nice little logo that goes with it that everybody, everybody loves. So um, we've stuck with the name, basically. So basically, what is your, ser your services? You're, you're analyzing the data from the stack. Yeah. And are you storing it in a database? Absolutely. Or is... So we run as a service, which means that as a customer, you don't need to worry about that. We will store your performance metrics, um, we'll store it, uh, important events that happen across your stack, and you can recall it basically through a browser or through our API whenever you need it. We'll also look for anomalies in the data, uh, alert you where things go out of whack, and so that you, know, you don't have to stare all day long at a monitor to figure out that the app is running properly or not. So your alerts are reducing pain for developers? Is that kind of a motif or a theme here? So definitely, um, so earlier today I was, I was talking about alerts, um, and alerts is a fact of life in, I think, in, in operations, uh, performance in operations, there's no way around that. Right now, what we've seen among our customers and in general in the industry is there's, there's a lot of, there's way too many. Um, and so with a tool like ours, the goal is to be able to cut the, the amount of noise that there is and really focus on the essential. Okay, so how do you guys pull out what's important? It's like, if there's so much data, yeah. so much, you're measuring the whole stack, how do you pull out what's so important that that's an alert that I get? So for that, we actually enlist um, our, our users. Um, you're right in that a machine or a, um, an application will generate thousands and thousands of metrics every single second. But for the, for the person who built the application or the person who's running the application, they know that not everything is, matters. Um, so what we let them do is basically put together really informative dashboards and put together really pinpointed um, alerts that will then look at the metrics that matter. And so that's where their expertise, their experience comes into play because they can say, okay, I, we need to look at this, this, and that and that's going to give us basically coverage for, um, for, for our application. So it's kind of user-oriented, like exactly. I, I define what's important exactly. to me. Exactly. Do you learn from that as well? So we learn, um, we learn indirectly in that, so in that we can see what, our, what kind of alerts our, our users are, are applying, what kind of metrics they care about. And so that's, at this stage, is something that we're collecting, I would say, um, passively, so we're not doing any kind of machine learning um, right now, but as the, the corpus of data that we're collecting grows, obviously, that's one of the key directions we're, we're going to in the, in the coming years. So where else do you plan to take Datadog in the future? 
in terms of industry, so in terms of verticals, for instance, we've had some really interesting um, resonance with uh, gaming studios, for instance, because yeah. the, the real-time nature of data, you know, all the games now are online, so um, that's, we are a tool that really responds well to their needs. And also, they have to crank out a lot of games you know, quickly, so because we are a very also decentralized tool where any developer can come in and start monitoring they work really well for, um, you know, for their model. So that's one we've seen. In general, though, we've kind of hit a lot of different verticals from finance to so um, web companies, even traditional, you know, the traditional enterprise. It, there's no discerning really pattern because everybody needs monitoring at the end of the day. So if there's one area where you want to take Datadog technology-wise, yeah. what would you, think you would want to add on in the future to your technology suite? So from a technology standpoint, it, it's a very interesting question. When we started Datadog, we, we, had, we still had the vision, but our vision to go to market was we'll build this fantastic data platform that will do crazy analytics and people will rave about it and be super excited. We went to market with that and the initial reaction was, that looks great, this is interesting, but um, you know, I have other things to do. Mm -hmm. And so what we've discovered through, through our going to market is what people, there's a difference between what people want to be doing and what people have to be doing. So we've invested a lot of time from a technology standpoint also making things easy to use, which is harder than, than it sounds. So we, we had a lot of, you know, there are a lot of tools out there that can monitor things you know, fairly fairly well. The problem is either the barrier of entry is too high or they're presenting too much data and there's no, no relevance, no sorting, um, no filtering done. So that's where, from a technology we've invested and we will continue to invest um, to really present relevant content to our, to our users. Even as in the back end their stack is growing, they're adding servers, you know, tens of servers per day, um, we, we want the tool to still stay relevant. And one last question, is mobile part of the stack that you're measuring? That's a great question. Um, mobile is not a strong emphasis right now. Um, the, we've kind of uh, limited the boundary, I think, naturally at the, the back end. Okay. Um, it's yeah. something that you know, we're, we're exploring kind of a next year, um, you know, like trying to figure out what makes sense, what doesn't. There's what we're seeing, there's so much work to be done even in the confine of sure. the back end yeah. that, um, you know, if only we, we can keep up with demand, then you know, that, that, that's great. Excellent. Alexi, we look forward to seeing you at future Thank you very much. Thanks.